All right, guys, so this is our uh, notes today on the Declaration of Independence. I'm about the notes. If anything's written in green, make sure that you write that down. Or if it's text on a, a green background, copy down the entire slide. So our first um, part of our notes are going to be a little bit of background. So where we last left off, we had a buildup of war. Um, there were a lot of taxes that um, the colonists were protesting, and one of the things that came out of those was a united colonies, and they created the first Continental Congress. So they went into action by um, doing some boycotts and banning trade with Great Britain, um, raising and training militias or troops, and all of this plants the seed of the conflict that's going uh, to arise um, in the American Revolution. So. What we call the first shots of the war, or the shots heard around the world, um, was that at Lexington and Concord um, in the Massachusetts colony. So the Redcoats, or the British soldiers, tried to confiscate weapons, and the um, militias in uh, Massachusetts um, resisted. And so this was a, um, a shorter and... Um, less organized conflict, um, so we consider it um, more of a um, kind of a, a conflict or a skirmish um, and not really uh, the first battle. But Lexington and Concord, the shots heard around the world, uh, were the first um, shots fired um, in this conflict by um, American militia. So then we come back with the Second Continental Congress, um, and they created a official Continental Army. George Washington is um, named commander, um, even though the conflict was kind of uh, simmering in the Massachusetts colony and he was from Virginia. This is also a, a good unifying um, idea um, to, to create a, a whole um, army of the, all the colonies. They also start to print money um, for the first time and act like a government separate from Great Britain. Um, in the Second Continental Congress. In addition, um, you have the first actual battle of the war in this Boston area. So at Bunker Hill, uh, Bunker Hill um, the first battle of the war takes place. Um, and the main thing you want to take from Bunker Hill is that it showed colonists could fight and that they were willing to fight um, for, this, for these ideals. In addition, you have the last chance at peace um, reje rejected by um, Parliament and the English King, um, and that was the Olive Branch Petition in which um, colonists hoped to, to end the conflict before it got um, out of control. So now we're up to 1775 and the Revolution. Um, it's, the, it's the eve of the Revolution. The Revolution is an in inevitable, or it, um, in other words, it's unable to be stopped. So in the fall and winter of uh, 1775 and into the early part of 1776, Americans start to place cannons around Boston. Um, Britain decides to, to leave Boston and headquarter in New York um, and gave up the, the area to colonial troops. Um, you have more troops arriving, including uh, Hessian mercenaries, um, out of uh, what's now Germany, and professional soldiers. Um, and then Washington is training up his army, the Continental Army. And these are made up of several different militias that had little to no uh, training. Um, and it was hard to recruit for the cause until um, a pamphlet called Common Sense was published by Thomas Paine. And so this really encouraged um, a lot of the people um, to take up the cause of liberty um, and he basically formed an argument um, around the idea that Americans should break free from Great Britain, um, kind of like a relationship of a, of a parent and a child. Um, and it was time for these colonies um, to break away. So he's also going to author another uh, important pamphlet during the war, but he was, uh, he was known for this um, common sense. Uh, it was common sense to leave Great Britain. So thousands of uh, copies are published, um, and it was read throughout the colonies um, and encouraged people to, to take up the cause. 
So by the summer of 1775, it just becomes uh, the Continental Congress. So we stop saying the First Continental Congress, the Second Continental Congress. And so this is basically um, America's government in these war years between 1775 and the first government um, that we're going to create called the Articles of Confederation. So this Continental Congress is our, um, our Revolutionary War government. Um, so the Congress, by summer of 1776 in Philadelphia, um, adopts a resolution to draft a document that outlines the reasons for becoming independent. So they um, come up with a committee, including Ben Franklin and Thomas Jefferson, and they all um, come together to try to um, come up with this document. This is going to be known as the Declaration of Independence. Um, it was based on um, some different uh, Enlightenment thinkers like John Locke um, and his idea that you have natural rights or rights that uh, can't be taken away. And the government should protect these rights. When they don't, um, people have the right to make sure that government changes. Um, so the Declaration of Independence is also a list of the things that King George III was doing wrong. So um, a list of grievances, things they are unhappy for, um, reasons for their uh, independence. The main author is Thomas Jefferson. Um, and so this was adopted and signed by members of Congress on, that's right, July 4th, 1776, and that's why it's considered our nation's birthday. Um, so this was kind of the first real step towards breaking away from Britain um, and um, the, the American Revolution. So now what? American colonists actually had to win their independence from Britain. Um, it would be an uphill battle um, since they were a super uh, superpower. Um, colonists were unprepared, didn't have the military or uh, economic means um, to do it. However, the war is official, it's begun. Um, so even though there have been some battles, you might have some other um, first, like the first shots, um, this is the real um, test because we consider ourselves different because of our government. And so this was the real, the first step in kind of creating that new government breaking away from the monarchy, from the mercantilism, from the colonialism, and starting a government based on ideas. That's going to be the Articles of Confederation, and it's going to be a one-branch government um, that they create um, in the years to come. It's going to outline uh, one legislative branch that can make laws. Um, it's going to outline a Congress, a group of people that are elected to make those laws, um, and it's going to be short-lived. So it's going to have a weak national government, support states' rights, and uh, eventually um, not be successful. So some additional um, vocab for you guys before we end today. No taxation without representation. This was a slogan that patriots used to protest British taxes um, that were passed by Parliament without colonist consent. And then you have a grievance. We talked about that. Uh, a formal complaint such as um, listed in the Declaration of Independence. And then finally, unalienable rights. So these are nat also called natural rights. Um, so the rights that are given to all humans cannot be taken away by governments. And in the Declaration of Independence, they're listed as life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. Um, and by John Locke, they're listed as um, life, liberty, and property. Um, so you kind of have different, different takes on those natural, natural rights.